By far one of the most instantly recognisable and epic features of jumping into a suit of Mjolnir is the heads-up display. It displays critical information about the suit, weapons and real-time battlefield analysis and situational awareness, and alongside the other powerful systems the Mjolnir boasts, it works flawlessly in allowing the Spartan wearing the suit to be aware of and react to unfolding events around them, even if they can't directly see them happening. Hello my freaky darlings and welcome back to Installation 00. Zero. This is Law and Theory and today, much to the glee of Madness, one of my regulars on Discord server and someone who frequents our game nights, we're going to be looking at the heads-up display technology on Mjolnir, ODST and Marine helmet displays, and how close this technology, as it is realised in game, is in real life. While we're on the subject of Discord, if you're not already on Discord, I strongly recommend you jump aboard. We discuss every aspect of the Halo universe from a very technical and in-depth point of view. We're pretty relaxed and hold frequent game nights, generally a couple a week at the moment. If you're an Xbox gamer, request the Xbox role so you're notified when Xbox game nights are happening. And do the same if you're a PC gamer, just request the Steam role instead. There's always people online to game with and to chat to, and you've got a good chance of gaming alongside me on some ridiculous epic custom games or catching me lurking around the Discord. Link is at the top of the description. I look forward to seeing you there. Now on to the HUD technology, and let's first look at examples of heads-up displays and their functionality in Halo. In various models of the Mjolnir powered assault armour, the sensors augmented into the Spartan's body display the soldier's vital signs on the HUD. Additionally, the HUD also reports the strength of the wearer's shields through the energy signatures it emanates, weapons, heat and ammunition levels, as well as grenade types and counter are also detected through sensors placed in the Spartan's gloves. In the Mjolnir HUD, each type of weapon that the glove detects has its own unique aiming reticle in relation to the type of ammo that it projects and its statistics. The reticle is also compatible with the scope of ranged weapons when installed via a system called Smart Scoping. The motion tracker is another important feature displayed on the HUD. Due to the insertion of IFF tags in UNSC soldiers, the radar can distinguish between friend or foe. And finally, the waypoint indicators are an on-screen directive that point out important objectives or locations in the Spartan's mission, and are extremely useful measuring the distance the Spartan is from the objective. When operating in teams, Spartans employ a system of status lights on their HUDs. The lights can be manipulated by the wearer at will and are most prominently used to acknowledge orders or report complications. The Spartan 2s and 3s also use them as an efficient channel for non-verbal communication, using combinations of lights as a messaging system. The standard Mjolnir armour contains a meter displaying the relative vitality of the user, a gauge displaying shield integrity status, a gauge tracking the quantity of ammunition available for weapons carried, a motion tracker, a counter tracking the number and type of grenades carried, a targeting reticle which changes relative to the weapons currently in use, acknowledgement lights from other members of the wearer's team, maps and information uploaded over the wearer's TACCOM, and zoom functions. The heads-up display used by conventional UNSC infantry including the UNSC Marine Corps and ODSTs are largely similar to that of Mjolnir's systems as the Mjolnir system is simply an advancement of the features already present in the Marine and ODST systems with some exceptions of backfeeding technologies from Mjolnir back to the ODSTs and Marines. They display weapons and grenades carried by the user as well as their ammunition and projecting a targeting reticle to assist aim. Many infantry HUDs such as those used by UNSC Marines and the cadets of Corbulo Academy incorporate a motion tracker although at least some models of the ODST helmet lacked one as of 2552. The shield bar is absent in armour systems which do not possess energy shielding as the technology for the ODSTs and the Marines likely predates the innovation of energy shielding, though health information is displayed likely via an array of biosensors implanted within the undergarments of the ODST battle armour, although it was unknown if such systems exist within the Marine variant. The HUDs also typically include a compass wheel in the centre of the upper portion. Heads-up display visuals are provided through the Marine UNSC's tactical eyepiece or ballistic goggles, grant varying levels of augmented reality readouts for the Marines, varying from full field of view displays with comprehensive situational awareness to the bare minimum of targeting and weapon readouts. UNSC pilots operating Pelican dropships are able to utilise the integrated helmet and display sight system to allow the craft's onboard mounted M370 autocannons to track the gunner's eye movements and aim accordingly. 
Additionally, some HUDs, including the ones used in the ODST armor variant, integrate a sophisticated battlefield intelligence system, the Visor, that improves the user's vision in low light areas, also outlining objects in the immediate area, green outlines as friendly units, red outlines as enemy combatants, and blue outlines as discarded or abandoned equipment or weaponry that can be used. The system can also track data and display tactical information such as maps and waypoints, thereby augmenting the visual perception of the world around them with additional layers of information. So HUD technology in the Halo universe is used extensively by humanity with even the Covenant and in particular the Elites utilising their own variant of a heads-up display. So what's the current developmental status of HUD technology in the real world and can we expect some epic things in the future? Well the origin of the name stems from a pilot being able to view the information with the heads position up and looking forward instead of angled down looking at the lower instruments. A HUD also has the advantage that the pilot's eyes do not need to refocus to the view outside after looking at the optically nearer instruments. Other than fixed mounted HUDs, there are also head mounted displays. Many modern fighters such as the F-18, the F-16 and the Eurofighter use both HUD systems and head mounted displays. The F-35 Lightning II was designed without a HUD relying solely on the head mounted display making it the first modern military fighter not to have a fixed HUD. Although they were initially developed for military aviation, HUDs are now used in commercial aircraft, automobiles and other mostly professional applications. A heads up display is a transparent display that presents data without requiring users to look away from their visual viewpoints. A precursor technology to augmented reality, heads up displays were first developed for pilots in the 1950s projecting simple flight data onto their line of sight, thereby enabling to keep their heads up and not look down at their instruments. Near-eye augmented reality devices can be used as portable heads-up displays, as they can show data, information and images while the user views the real world. Many definitions of augmented reality only define it as overlaying the information. This is basically what a heads-up display does, however, practically speaking, Augmented reality is expected to include registration and tracking between the superimposed perceptions, sensations, information, data and images, and some portion of the real world. Augmented reality is an emerging market which is receiving growing attention. It's the idea that we can physically wear devices that allow instant and intuitive access to information that seems to appeal to people. But there has been a long-standing issue with size, weight, energy requirements, limited technology, narrowed view box, focus depth, the list goes on. There have been advances in the technology that are allowing these devices to start becoming viable. While VR headsets are becoming more and more common, especially in the gaming world, most VR headsets need to be tethered to a computer system and ultimately obstruct your view of the world around you, presenting a significant hazard. The useful and intelligent application of augmented reality headsets in the real world is limited heavily by packet size and weight, energy requirement, affordability and actual usability. But there are ways to get around this. Google Glass made good headway in circumnavigating many of these issues but it was ultimately a first crude effort in the field and failed in the end due to varying constraints including limited viewing box, limited application and even social stigma relating to the presence of a camera for recording events without the knowledge of others around them, granting the wearers of these devices the unflattering nickname Glassholes. I made a video short while ago regarding the HoloLens, a Microsoft created augmented reality headset, and while it is bulky it currently represents the best chance for augmented reality to begin becoming mainstream, but again it suffers from similar constraints on size, weight, portability and functionality, yet it still has a pretty epic application for upcoming Halo titles. If you haven't seen the video, the link is in the description and pinned to the top of the comments. I believe I've spoken in brief before about my interest in various technological fields and I am making headway in a more comprehensive exploration of that in video format for those of you who are interested. And I also believe I've touched upon my qualifications and experience in these fields, so that coupled with my passion for Halo, HUD technology in AR format is something I've been working on developing and delivering. A few years ago I conceptualized the HUDAPT. Unlike other devices, the HUDAPT is classed as a peripheral device. It has no onboard processing and instead harnesses wireless display technology otherwise known as wide-eye, laser-based Pico projectors, crystal prisms, refractive monochromatic lenses and lithium-ion batteries. It uses your smart device's processing power coupled with cloud computing and displays the information you care about without getting in the way. All of this stripped down makes it lightweight, but also being treated as a peripheral device that outputs selective screen duplications 
makes it highly adaptable and compatible with current smart devices. I'd like to say that at some point in the very near future, these conceptualization designs, programs and early prototypes that I've developed may lead to a finished product, but there is still a lot of work to be done. And ultimately, it is entirely possible a more established and better funded company may get there before me. But ultimately, that doesn't matter majorly, because the augmented reality field is on the teetering edge of becoming a booming, emerging market. The programming is no more complicated than what is freely available and possible now, and the hardware exists in one form or another, just not in the right combination yet. Augmented reality is already here. All that's needed now is the next big jump in its evolution that would lead to wide-scale application. So while heads-up display in Halo seems like a cool and futuristic technology, the reality is that we're basically able to create it now if enough effort and interest was channeled into making it happen. And I would be lying if I said that I hadn't considered crowdfunding for just such a project in the past. And there may yet be time for that. Personally, I figure if we spend more time looking and interfacing with the world around us in a highly interactive way, and less time looking down at the phones in our hands, we are, at the very least, less likely to walk into lampposts. So, that's got to be a good thing. Thanks for watching. Stick your comments down below. I look forward to what you have to say. I want to give a quick shout out to my patrons. So Tenchi, the silent cartographer, Brian, Sebastian, Defiant Alpha 117, Nathan, Red Sea, and Darian, the holders of the mantle, Ty, Black Biscuit, J Rabbit, Austin, Kaiser, and Silux, my reclaimers, Zach, Deep Cover, Verbal Statue, Spessigo, Spartan A498, Guppy, Josh, Mickey, Bastian, and Molshar, my Metarchs, and all the other patrons that have jumped aboard to support the channel. You guys are awesome, and all of this wouldn't be possible without you. If you like Halo lore discussed to insane levels of detail, hit that subscribe button and the little bell icon so you're told the second a new video hits the shelves. Be sure to support us on all major social media channels including Discord, and if you really love the channel, consider heading over to Patreon and supporting the channel over there. It would mean the world to me and would free up more of my time for me to put into this content and other Halo related goodness. Take it easy everyone, and find peace in the domain. <laughs>